My father always said to me, Lioto, you have samurai blood. Fight is very important for my goal in UFC. The great karate-styled martial artist Lioto, the dragon Machida, had a lot to prove when he was just starting out. Many in the mixed martial arts community looked down on him and thought this fighter's career would be short-lived. My style is very different. I adapted my karate. Would the dragon be able to humble all the giants like Sukuju, Tito Ortiz, Tiago Silva, Rashad Evans, and many more? Why did people think less of Lioto in the first place? What happened in these fights against the giants? And what is the dragon's biggest victory in life? Let's find out. First, let's explore why people believed Lioto Machida would be ineffective in MMA. You see, Lioto is the son of a karate master named Yoshizo Machida, and under his father's guidance, he started to train in the family tradition from the young age of three. People were skeptical because of this background in karate. Back when Machida was just starting out, many believed that karate simply did not work in the dynamic world of MMA. The fighting style has some specific and well-designed striking techniques, but lacks comprehensive tactics in ground pounding and training in grappling. This puts traditional karate practitioners at a disadvantage against fighters with wrestling and boxing experience. This led to many people believing that Lyoto Machida would just be a failure inside the octagon. But boy, did Lyoto prove them wrong. To prove his worth and the viability of karate, Lyoto Machida started to pick fights with the giants of UFC. What happened in these fights, you ask? Simply put, big and powerful opponents started dropping like flies before him. The first giant on our list who fell victim to Lyoto's masterful combat prowess is Sokuju, the African assassin. In the light heavyweight division of UFC 79, an assassin stood in front of the dragon vowing to take Machida down. Sokuju's giant physique and aggression made the fans and commentators anticipate a win for the African assassin. In the first round, Sokuju lands a powerful kick and throws Machida to the ground. Just when it seemed that the assassin pinned down the dragon, Machida switched and put Sokuju on his back for almost the entire round. The assassin could barely do anything against Machida's stranglehold. Although Sokuju did try to inflict some damage on the dragon near the end, round one was dominated by Lyoto Machida. Who do you think favors round one? Will Lyoto be able to take down the assassin in round two? The round starts with a powerful high kick from Lyoto Machida. Enraged by the kick, Sokuju throws some massive punches in hopes of retaliation, but Machida proved too fast for the strikes, constantly moving in and out of Sokuju's range. Joe, as you pointed out, a lot of he got caught. Sokuju got caught. And now Machida Finally, Sokuju reaches a bit too far and gets punished. With one punch, Machida knocks Sokuju on the ground. As soon as the assassin falls, Machida jumps forward and throws one thunderous punch after the other. Sokuju became helpless beneath the barrage of attacks. Although he tried to fight back, Lyoto soon tightened his choke, trapping the assassin. Machida perfected the arm triangle choke, and Sokuju had no other option than to submit to the dragon's might. The dragon vaporized the assassin. Machida wins. What did you think of that win? Techniques over brute strength. Leave your comment below. But Machida's giant hunt did not end with Sokuju. The next target is the fighting superstar Tito Ortiz. No doubt Ortiz is a veteran of the sport, but he got a little too arrogant in his fight against Lyoto. Before the fight, Ortiz said that knocking out Lyoto was not his goal. He wants to keep the dragon in the fight and punish him throughout the three rounds. However, this cocky fighter paid the price for his arrogance. He wanted to punish Machida. But to do so, he needed to grab a hold of this agile fighter in the first place. Throughout most of the first round, Tito Ortiz struggled to land any strikes on Machida. The dragon is ever elusive, making Tito Ortiz extremely irritated. Ortiz made several gestures in the fight expressing his displeasure in Lyoto Machida's constant movement. But Machida was not just simply evading attacks, he found the gaps and made the perfect counter strikes. Finally, with less than 25 seconds remaining of round one, the dragon takes down Ortiz and bam, bam, bam repeatedly punches the opponent till the end of the first five minutes. Machida wins the first round. The second round went more or less the same way as the first one. However, round three was more eventful. Lyoto unleashed his inner key and it was so powerful that the ref got knocked down. With less than two minutes remaining of the fight, Machida kicks Ortiz hard on the liver. This makes Ortiz lose balance and he falls to the ground. 
Lyoto Machida aggressively jumps forward and keeps on pounding Ortiz like a beast. But with masterful skill, Tito Ortiz turns the table and performs a guard hold. But then something truly jaw-dropping happened. With less than 30 seconds remaining on the clock, Ortiz wraps his legs around Machida and performs a stunning triangle choke. I mean, look at this. But Machida manages to get out of the choke before passing out. Time runs out, and Machida is unanimously declared victorious. Machida collects another trophy in his hunt for giants. But, what if the fight lasted a few more seconds? Would Machida submit, or would the outcome remain unchanged? Share your thoughts in the comments. While there are many epic fights in Lyoto Machida's career, let's see two more epic giant hunts before going on to the biggest victory of Machida's life. In UFC 94, the dragon faces the audacious Thiago Silva. In this clash of light heavyweights, both the fighters had won the previous 13 fights in a row. But in this bout, Lyoto Machida humbled Thiago by continuously slamming him on the floor. The fight ended in the last second of the first round. After multiple power contacts, Machida knocked Thiago out of the fight. Scene. In the following fight, Lyoto Machida stood face to face with the light heavyweight champion of the world, Rashad Evans. Critics have previously called Machida's style cautious and boring, but that night was anything but. It was pure excitement and full of aggression. His strikes bore into the opponent's body. After only 8 minutes and 57 seconds, Rashad Evans passes out and falls to the ground. And with that, Lyoto Machida is crowned as champion of the world. All of these victories have made it pretty obvious that Lyoto Machida's effectiveness and place in MMA cannot be questioned. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Machida era. But among all of his crowning moments, which victory had the most important impact? Who was the fight against? We believe this fight and victory was against himself. You see, Lyoto started training from a very young age. Like any other children, he didn't enjoy getting up early at 5 and practicing karate under a very strict environment all day. He often complained. To this, Lyoto's old man imparted to him a lesson that stayed with him till this day. Above all, you must first beat yourself. Like a true practitioner of karate, Lyoto Machida took these words to heart. He practiced day and night, mastering not only karate but also Brazilian jiu-jitsu. But most importantly, he was able to conquer his ego. Unlike many of us, he remained humble even in his streak of victories. He never looked down on his opponents. This razor-sharp focus on improving his abilities and respecting his opponents allowed Lyoto Machida to be undefeated in the first 16 matches of his professional career. But what was even more impressive was the grace with which he accepted his defeats. He lost for the first time in his 17th fight. Mauricio Shogun. Rua not only destroyed his perfect fighting record, but also snatched his beloved light heavyweight champion's belt from him. This was a horrible blow for Lyoto, but he never lost his grace. While many legends become sore losers, Lyoto Machida accepted the defeat saying that the Shogun deserved the win. Like a true karate warrior, he overcame the shock and dared to restart. Lyoto Machida trained even harder and had a strong comeback. Sure, there were defeats along the way, but the courage to restart never faded. This gained him the respect and admiration of fans, opponents, and MMA experts alike. Although no longer the unbeaten champion, he is still adored in the combat sports community as the mighty fighter who not only conquered giant opponents, but also the ego which has been the cause of demise for so many others. And for that, Lyoto Machida has our mad respect. The story of Lyoto Machida is refreshingly unique. More often than not, great fighters succumb to their arrogance, become mere shells of what they once were, and tarnish their legacy. Unfortunately, this has been the case for TJ Dillashaw. Watch this video to learn how his cockiness got the better of him in a fight against Henry Cejudo.